If you're new to theme parks, or not really a coaster fan, one of the more confusing common elements of roller coaster design can be block sections, or brake runs, as they are sometimes called. These safety elements allow multiple trains to run on track at once, which, at the heart of it, doesn't sound particularly special. For those more visually inclined, I've prepared a demonstration. Please excuse the crudity of this model, I didn't have time to build it to scale or paint it. In our first example, we see an overly simplified roller coaster. Due to the limited size of our station, we can only run one train at a time. We could add a second train if we extended our station, but we'd still only have one train on the track at a time. We could run a second train on track, but if the first one stopped for any reason, we'd have a collision on our hands, and the theme park I've lawyers won't allow that. Or will they? More than a century of roller coaster design solved the collision problem by running the second train after the first car passed a certain safe point on the track. They typically used a kill switch on the chain lift's motor. If the first train failed to clear the remaining track, an operator could shut the lift hill down before the second train reached the top. This kinda obviously, was not a very foolproof way to do it, and unfortunately, accidents were very common. The problems only got worse if the ride was busy. While most accidents only resulted in injuries, more severe accidents also occurred when operators ran trains too close together, and deaths on roller coasters were far, far more common than they are today. Enter a man named William Schmidt. Schmidt's grandfather and namesake opened an amusement park on the north side of Chicago in 1904. Called Riverview Park, because it sat on the river, it had a number of roller coasters built over the years, mostly from designers Fred Church and his partners Tom, and after Tom's death, Frank, Pryor. They were kind of the Bollinger and Mabel art of their day. In 1924, Pryor and Church built Riverview's crowning achievement, a coaster called The Bobs. By 1940, there had been accidents on several of Riverview's coasters, including The Bobs. Whatever, accidents happen. The standard practice of the day was to close the ride until the public outcry faded and then reopen the exact same ride under a new name. The Schmidts were no different, until, that is, the younger William Schmidt went to college for electrical and mechanical engineering. He came back to Riverview with a number of safety and design improvements in mind. Schmidt's solution, proposed in a 1940 patent application with Ted Morse and Marshall Reeves, was to divide the track into sections, with brakes controlling access to each section. These brakes were capable of both stopping a train completely and sending it onto the rest of the track, allowing it to finish the circuit. Each block brake represented the beginning of a block section. The brakes, always turned on, would hold a train until the block section in front of them was clear. Once the brakes received the signal it was clear from the next set of brakes, they disengaged to allow the train through, ensuring there was always an empty section of brakes between any two trains on the track. We can see in our original model how this works. In this case, our station acts as a block brake, but we can't add just one more to the track. If we only have one on the track, there will never be an empty block section in front of our next train. We're still stuck building a longer station capable of holding multiple trains. By adding a second block section to the run, we will always have an empty section left, allowing us to have two trains on the track at the same time with no risk of collision, well, minimal risk. We can continue adding sections, with each one allowing us to have another train operating on track simultaneously. The benefit of this system is twofold. First, the lawyers love it since it prevents accidents. But it also allows designers to make larger, longer rides with much lower wait times. With only one train running, a ride can only cycle as many riders as one vehicle can carry, over the period of the ride's duration. This isn't accounting for loading and unloading times in the station as well. The same ride, with the 
addition of a few block sections allows three trains to cycle over the same amount of time, tripling capacity, and dropping wait times to a third. Clever design means that, when running at maximum capacity, one train will arrive to unload right after the previous train departs. Schmidt Morrison Reeves's patent design shows a remarkable, if not entirely accidental, similarity to our model. Borrowing from the railroad industry, they described a system of relays and holding circuits designed to automatically manage the brakes at the entrance of each block. They also mention using a chain to restart movement on a stopped train once the block in front is clear. The cherry on top? It's all connected to a stoplight-style mechanism with colored lights indicating when a section is clear or not. Schmidt followed up this patent with another in 1947, which proposed wiring each section into a single electrical control box, elevated and positioned to see all the brake runs, including the station. Quote, since the operator is thus removed from the platform and its distractions, he will be less likely to have his attention distracted from the work at hand. Schmidt installed his safety inventions on the bobs. It appears this was the only block sectioned roller coaster for 20 years, though it's possible some of the other roller coasters at Riverview received Schmidt's safety mechanisms as well. Despite our best research attempts, we can find no example of any other roller coaster outside Riverview using a system like Schmidt's until almost 1960. The same year that Schmidt's patents expired, 1967, Riverview Park closed and the Bobs was removed, presumably destroyed. By 1959, Walt Disney was ready to get into the roller coaster game. With the help of Aero Developments, Disney's Wet Enterprises created the first tubular steel roller coaster. While not the first roller coaster to use steel, it was the first to use tube-shaped track. Its design would influence almost every steel coaster for decades. This coaster was the Matterhorn Bobsleds. The Matterhorn has a series of governors, wheels rotating at a constant speed capable of allowing a train to pass at the correct speed. A train traveling too slow would be pushed faster, while one going too fast would be slowed. Though it would receive modern computer-controlled block sections in a later refurbishment, it debuted without them. Instead, the ride had overlapping block sections with three switches each, though this system has a patent of its own. The original block brakes on Matterhorn bobsleds weren't really block brakes in the modern sense, but we'll get to that in a second. First, the similarities. They appear to have run through a similar manual control as Schmidt's second patent. The Matterhorn brake patent doesn't cite Schmidt directly, but seems to reference his work. Instead of turning the brakes off and on constantly as trains pass, like Schmidt's system, the Matterhorn only engages the brakes in an emergency stop situation. This means the brakes wear out less and should be, overall, more reliable. The difference with the Matterhorn's original brakes is that they can't restart the trains once they stop. This system is an emergency brake and nothing more. The brakes could be released electrically from the control box, but the trains had no means of resuming their path down the track except gravity. In some places, this meant operators needed to physically restart trains along the track before the next train could be released. The Imagineers seem to acknowledge the error remaining in this system, since they point out the two feet of padding in the nose of the ride vehicles, especially for the unloading area, in their patent. While the system still had its flaws, it was missing only one final advance before taking the form we see today. It was Disney's next mountain coaster that implemented our modern version of block brakes. Space Mountain was the first coaster to use modern computing in the form of programmable logic controllers to control the brakes. Unlike the previous manual systems used by Schmidt and on the Matterhorn, Space Mountain's system was the first to be fully automated. If something went wrong, the system shut the trains down itself, just like the Matterhorn. The computer system, once it was sure the track was clear again, could then restart the ride, resuming the stopped block sections without the need for a manual override, like in the past. Each brake also had a small tire, like the governors on the Matterhorn, or the drive tires on Ford's Magic Skyway, which Disney built for the World's Fair in 1964. 
a stopped train could be pushed back up to speed before continuing the rest of the circuit. It could also diagnose where on the track the problem occurred and relay that information directly to ride operators. The system was so successful, nearly all modern roller coasters still use something very, very similar, with the only real advances coming in the forms of hardware like sensors and computers. The speed of computer systems combined with more reliable sensors meant that roller coaster trains can have their speed scanned by laser, trimmed to an ideal speed, and be stopped and restarted in block sections, all from a single central control room, faster than a human operator could manage. Closed circuit TV systems and other advancements in monitoring allow operators even better warning and control for emergency situations. A century ago, when the Bobs was first built at Riverview Park, deaths on roller coasters were just an accepted part of the industry. 20 years later, William Schmidt adapted advancements in railway safety and developed them into his park, laying the foundations for systems found on every roller coaster three quarters of a century later. Today, mere injuries on roller coasters are seen as unacceptable, breakdowns are headline news, and deaths from negligence can ruin both a park and a ride manufacturer. And while roller coasters have never been safer, modern computer-controlled ride systems allow for longer, faster, and more interactive experiences than could have been imagined a generation ago.